Hi folks, welcome to IMB Magazine. My name is Clive Forth from MTB Skills and you're joining us for the Skills and Technique feature. Each issue we're going to be looking at different techniques and the core skills uh, to riding mountain bikes. So sit back and relax and enjoy. Well, there we go. That's a nice little intro and that's got me warmed up for sure in cooler climbs back here in Scotland after my trip to Italy. So. Welcome folks to another edition of our skills and technique feature. This time around, as much as we're moving into winter, we're not particularly going to focus on winter skills. We're going to look at bringing all them skills together and using them to link features. So it's all about linking pieces in the trail and obviously we're looking at the more technical side of things, the more technical terrain and linking stuff, bringing all the skills together that we've learned, wheelers, manuals, hops, pressure, obviously using your core techniques, your vision and so on. Um, really will help you find a little bit more flow on the trail. So whether it's hard pack like we're on at the minute, bike park purpose built, technical, non-technical, um, being able to link things really will assist you carry a bit more momentum down the trail and find that all important flow. So enjoy. Right, so here we go. We're, we're straight into the thick of it here. It's a bit of a like morning kind of moment for me, straight out the truck and uh, instantly finding some technical stuff to play with. So having filmed our little intro, we thought, oh, well, that's actually a really good starting point for linking up stuff. So what we've got here, we're playing with the trail here. So anybody that knows it, we are actually running this little bit backwards, but it, it makes for some nice film and photos. So the key to essentially shortcut in this line and not going the long way around these rocks and into more snaggle points. Being able to get a pre-jump over here using a bunny hop and then pressure in on the landing and pump that landing to carry some speed off of it on the back slope. It's all about getting this corner tidied up behind me. I've got to carry a good little bit of pace out of that corner. I'm on an upslope, so I've got to accelerate. So gear selection, looking ahead, being able to read the, the terrain and seeing what the head's up in me is all important stuff. But the key here is a pre-jump using a bunny hop to uh, go up and over these rocks in the air rather than rather than around them so it's a classic little bit where we're, we're linking shapes we're linking through there just to carry a bit more momentum and, and flow through excellent so as we're pottering along taking photos and filming bits today we're just picking off sections that are kind of poignant of where it's good to use a bit of technique and the techniques you'd have learnt in all the core stuff um, to help you carry speed have that additional flow and we say we're linking features so this section of trail we've got two features here that we've just come through and you'll see by carrying a bit of momentum on the way in i can do just a little bonk off of this rock and carry that into the down slope and i've got less in the way of pedaling to do between the features to get up this next feature over on this side which has got the roots in So the advantage of carrying that speed and putting that effort in before the section rather than in the section is that I'm not having to accelerate at this point where there's a slippy route. If I've got enough momentum I can just pop a little hop up on top of there. Um, so it's tricky, it, you know, you're riding a potentially a bigger loop, a bigger trail and you want to conserve energy in places and expend energy in others and here it's better to be explosive back there and conserve it here but in the bigger picture of the entire lap you might just be sat down through here as you're climbing most of the time and grinding away. So you know, you've know you got to play to your strengths and uh, brush up and work on your weaknesses. Right, so, well, linking features, we have come to the epicenter of features when it comes to trails out of the territory, at least we're in Dalbriti. And you get lots of these open, exposed granite bedrock sections Obviously you're not getting that everywhere in the world, I don't know where you're viewing from, you might have more technical stuff, you might have more sedate stuff, but here there's a lot to think about and we're using manuals, hops, pressure in, pressure out, obviously by default there's a bit of braking going on, we're running downhill and we're obviously looking ahead and sighting our line. <clears throat> Speaking of line choice, there is a plethora of line choices through here and you can make them all work and you know, the, the byproduct of what you do up here really does affect the next section. It's the next section that you can see from the wear and the evidence on the terrain that, that people struggle with to get the sweeter of the lines. We get on another open piece of bedrock, slabby but knobbly, 
and if you can get a high line it gives you a boost of speed through the next piece of trail making that that bit easier if you don't get up on top of it you end up migrating to the low line and typically where the waters run uh, and that takes out all the speed for the following section so it's key up here to get this piece right um, if we come in high kind of where I'm stood we end up turning in across dropping down we've got hard turns to make at the base if we can start to take that inside line which you see in the video clip then it really does straight line things up but the setup up here behind me is key we played around with it doing some photos and they make good photos but they're not good lines to ride if you want to have that flow and carry the momentum through here to get the piece after and that's typically it it's it it's not necessarily about the piece that you're currently riding it's about the piece that you're about to ride so here, here i am on this piece of trail and it's already been done it's already been mentally planned and prepped and set up prior to arriving on it so it's not about where i'm at it's about where i'm going and it you know it, it's that forward planning very difficult if you've never ridden somewhere before that's where your vision comes in looking ahead looking up trying to read the terrain and visualize where the trail is going to go where am i on the hillside am i going to be dropping down the hillside turning back into it and coming around the hillside so that helps you with your gear selection and, and how you approach the piece so by cleaning that line up up there making a clean exit on this corner i can get up on this high line and that puts me at the top of the slab to carry momentum as you saw in the in the clip and i can just roll off of this and the next bit the trail climbs up the way <coughs> i don't even need to paddle admittedly i'm going very slow at the top we're, we're playing with it for the purposes of filming if you put a pedal stroke or two in you're not really putting a lot of power behind that pedal stroke then you waft through that gradient no bother and that links you and takes you to the next section where again you're gonna to have to expel some energy because it's more technical bedrock action around there and so you've, you've conserved it you know you explosive explosive bring that energy back get your breathing sorted and dialed and compose yourself and you're recovered ready to take on the next section right all that said and done and demonstrated it is brilliant isn't it however if you're not working at that level there are other options in here and so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some of those other options for those of you who haven't quite got the commitment to take on the punch drop haven't quite got the speed to sort of really drive through things we'll find you some other sneaky lines in this bit and we'll see how we can link it up slightly slower right so we've had another look at this then and we want to see how riders who uh, may be less confident um, and certainly not as competent and confident with the drop side of it can pick their way through it and still you know make it easier make the bike flow through here keeping nice consistent speed keeping it rhythmic and that's a good challenge for me as well because it's not typically how I personally would approach a piece of trail given my own personal capabilities and skill set um, but obviously coaching riders of different levels and abilities it's something I have to do from time to time is is uh, approach these things in a different manner. So what we've got is as I come down into the trail, rather than taking the drop and a hit, I actually stick to the right. Obviously it still requires a level of commitment to get onto that and to stick to it, but speed steady, grip's good on this granite. Now this time, rather than taking the high line and committing into here, which is quite narrow, and you can end up on the off camera, and the green is something that certainly can give people the willies and not wanting to get on the moss, I thread it into the groove. So sticking it into the groove, I'm obviously looking ahead and reading it. Now another thing that people get unsettled about are the drops. So rather than taking the drop and straight lining in, it forces me and pushes me up onto the top of the granite here. Now by using a good bit of speed control back there, I've got the momentum, I can easily bobble my way up on here and read ahead what's going on. Not liking the look of the drops, things are covered in green. The evidence here is that a lot of people are coming in up here because the granite's clean. So I can move in just beyond where Daniel stood and pick a smoother slabby bit that turns me in. However, what it does below us is it puts us down into this plateau where I'm faced with a choice of either coming down into some snaggly roots over here, which again is something that can be very off-putting, doesn't really inspire confidence uh, for grip levels, and it tightens up the turn. So in this sense, at this speed, it's not necessarily the, the best line choice. So what we've done is we've made a turn in here. It seems like we're making a bit of a meal of it by coming back on ourselves, but by coming around the outside, we're on steadier, easier ground, and we can clean up that entrance into the next bit. And that allows me down here to do some pedaling. I've got good space and I can get prepped and set up 
and that gives me more chance at that speed and that style to get up on that high line still. But it, it's just to give you another idea of how, you know, you don't necessarily have to take on the drop side of it and you can still pick a tidier line through a piece of trail like this and get that all important flow that you're looking for. Linking stuff is all about trying to maintain a flow through a piece of trail. People talk about this thing of flow and, you know, there's sort of, people have different opinions on what that really means. Is it the trail builders thing to build it into the trail? Is it rider's responsibility? And if you look at the rider's responsibility to helping get flow and carry momentum through trail, then that comes to do with using technique and linking your techniques. So this wee slab, we're just gonna have a quick run up this. What's key here as always, as we looked at in our last thing there is, is vision and line. So vision's gonna set you up on it. And here you can look ahead and towards this feature and that's going to enable you to choose the right gear maybe you know down here before you get to the feature or just as you approach a feature so cadence gear selection if I just ride into this slab that's going to kill a lot of speed and momentum if I wheelie up onto it but I don't do anything about the back end that's also going to kill a little bit of momentum so there's two things happening is one is a bit of I'm waiting from the front using power and a little power wheelie and the second then is getting the bum out of the saddle and just doing a little bit of unweighting at the back wheel to help that come up onto an over. So all the time, if you're losing energy, you're losing speed or you're literally losing physical energy, you know, you lose the speed, you've got to pedal again after it and it's that pulling away from the traffic lights that burns the fuel in the car, it's the same. As soon as you have to get back up to speed again, you go from zero cadence to some cadence uh, that's when we have a big drain on our tank on our own energy reserve so all the time linking the features linking our techniques in order to save energy which we can then spend somewhere else or have in the tank should uh, the ride go on longer than anticipated for example there we go so as you can see in the shots the subtlety in there just getting that pedal timing right sometimes you have to have a little sort of semi back pedal or a pause ideally if you can do it all in one smooth flow that's ultimate but the gear meters don't necessarily work out the same every time but you pick that front wheel up and lift it up onto this feature and then just lift your bum up out of the saddle and that helps the back end rise up and while i'm driving the pedal so i'm actually trying to unweight that back end as well by loading up into the front wheel on the on the downstroke of the pedal just to tickle a bit of weight out of it now maybe that it's whatever that is whether it's a, a big root or a piece of rock it might be getting a bit green and slippy or an icy day and in which case you don't want to pull too much weight out the back end because you're going to spin the wheel up uh, and it really is these little subtleties linking the features linking the techniques that can save you a lot of energy let's just for the sake of uh, comedy more than anything see what it looks like when we just kind of plow into it and you know power our way through it so we'll have a quick look at that Right, so as much as it's not that tragic, just riding up that and popping out the top, you can see there's a bit of a stall and it obviously doesn't look quite as smooth. What you've got to remember is when you go for a trail ride, it doesn't matter how long that is, that process can, can be quite frequent. You can quite easily be colliding into things rather than gracefully lifting your wheels up onto and over these features. So energy loss from one hit, not that massive, but stack them up, kilometre after kilometre, feature after feature. Suddenly it actually does become quite a lot. It really does impact your journey. Okay, so because this is an interesting little feature to work with, I've been riding to and fro it. We're going to play with this on the down. But what we're going to imagine in this scenario is that I don't have all this entrance space behind me. It's quite slow speed. And it's got a little upslope onto it, which will give you a close up as the wheels come into. And again, I can use that little lift into the front wheel, lift into the back wheel and drop myself into that, use that slope, catch kind of its back slope and push off of it and get a bit of drive on the way out. Or if I was going much faster, I could use that as a bonk and pop out of there and land further down, but it's quite flat down there. So let's have a look at that in action and we'll, we'll put this into a, a downhill scenario. By lifting the wheel up over that little lip, I'm avoiding getting stalled out on it thus losing speed, momentum and flow. And what I'm using there is a little manual and then a little rear wheel lift just to point the nose down, press the rear wheel into that down slope. Rather than again blunting into it, hitting it, killing speed, and then if I was getting that bit quicker, getting pinged up in the air, coming down, 
landing on the flat killing speed and working with the shapes that I've got and linking my shapes, linking my techniques to match that one feature. We're going to go now and look at something that's a little bit more complicated, there's a lot happening in a very short space of time, uh, so let's look at some clips of that and then we'll talk you through it. So here we've got a series of what we call rolling press drops, so we're pressing that crag out and then in the bottom section we've got a larger punch drop and that obviously sets us up into the corner as well. So features, crag, drop off and a corner, technique being used, linking that technique, press, 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 punch and then obviously our footwork and everything is dialed and set up for the corner below. Right, so we've moved away from the purpose built stuff when we've come to more natural terrain. Um, and this is where I see with the coaching stuff that uh, people are getting on well with the Waymark graded stuff. And they start to move away from that into more natural environments is when they start to struggle a little more. Um, anybody that's been riding for years, we rode a lot of this stuff and, and kind of cut our teeth on it. So we're quite versed at dealing with shapes that exist in nature that obviously haven't been built with the purpose and intention of riding your bike through them. Uh, so we have a little up and over what would have been an old dry stone wall, a very tight ditch and as you'll see in the clip following on from that is a tough little climb and that's that's tricky enough in itself um, but matching it into having to clean the climb afterwards brings a whole new uh, sort of uh, thing to the game. So what we've got here obviously as we approach this vision is telling everything about what's happening and this time of year is quite poignant it's a little bit harder to pick that line out you've got all the leaf litter on the floor and the trails become a little vague so it's really key to, to you know keep that head up look ahead so linking our techniques gear selection cadence uh, with, there's a lot of unweighting going on through here probably a little manual through the base to stop the front wheel getting hung up in this tight stream crossing uh, and then we're into gear selection cadence to get up the ramp after it it's the sort of place where you know you, you mess this up by not using good technique, linking your techniques together and linking those shapes, the rolling over the old dry stone wall and the stream crossing, then you really struggle to make the climb. Right, so following on from our stream crossing, we've got this uh, complicated traverse. So here we've got a couple of features. We've got this little rocky crag and a drop into an upslope and a right-hand corner also around a crag. And the trick here, to link these two features really is the speed control, the gear selection, obviously looking where we're going, our line choice, etc. is all coming in. So it's about carrying a nice little bit of momentum here, not too much that you blow out the corner on the crag because it's all off camera and working against you. It's carrying just enough momentum that you can find some grip in there, get hooked up and then be able to pedal out. Now, we're gonna show you two examples of me riding this. One, I've come in with a right foot lead which I'm predominantly right foot lead uh, and it makes pedaling in the crag a little more awkward because when you've got to drive the crank round you actually end up inside pedal down and the crag's camber this way so you want to get a collision point with the pedal it's quite easy to clip your pedal out so I adjusted my technique came in pretty much the same setup probably going to be very very similar on speed but with the left foot lead rolled it out and now I can drive that left foot round the hips are set up nice to take the corner and as I drive the crank round where I need to accelerate on the little upslope on the exit of the corner, I can drive that left crank down and there's no collision point there. So it enables me to make a little bit of a smoother exit. So bringing the technique in, linking the two features, it's all coming together nice in there. These are real tricky problem passages for, for a lot of folk uh, and they're the ones that, that, that can easily frustrate you. If you're getting frustrated with it, if you're, you're trying it again and again and it's not happening, just Put it to one side, come back here another day. Take your mind away from it, come back when you're fresh and try it another day. We want to try and get to that point. If you are sessioning something and repeating it again and again, don't get to the point of frustration. Just before you think, no, not today, not getting it, leave it, come back. You start to get frustrated, it works against you. Right, so another tricky section on this traverse. We've come down the hill. There's a few little sniper rocks and various bits in there where we're using little front wheel lifts, little rear wheel lifts, just dancing the bike through those shapes, trying to stop them taking out and ripping off the rear mech, as well as stop the square edge granites wanting to slow us up. There's some slippery roots and dead wood in there as well that want to wash your wheels out. So again, we're using unweighting to get through those. And what's key here is that we can clean this corner with a little bit of momentum, 
gear selection is important we may have to shift down a gear to make it up this gradient with good cadence uh, and putting any type of hop shape in even if it's just this front wheel little manual and then back wheel up up onto this log this fallen tree um, you know anything up here is really tricky for that because as soon as you stop pedaling obviously you want to start moving backwards uh, so speed control is dead key here accelerating up and then this is using that technique which you'd have learned linking into the bunny ops if you've been uh, following this, the uh, stuff and you know sort of our core techniques so it's a little manual to get the front wheel up may use a tap of the gas maybe a little power wheelie bonk the front wheel on the log and it's a little hop lunge the bike through tap the back wheel on and i can go again set up and now we've got another corner as our traverse carries on so there you go that's linking technique linking features um, there's lots of them out there it's when trail does get more entertaining for me anyway it gets more more fun if you see people like chris Ackrig and so on they're doing their kind of trail trials type riding and that really opens up what you can ride obviously something that should be said in this type of terrain is you know if you've cleaned that first passage you're going uphill it's little downs little ups little downs little ups you're getting more and more tired as you get further through and and that energy is a big thing that's why it's important to save energy as we looked at earlier in this um, so that you've got it to expend somewhere else and these moves are explosive they do burn a lot of calories so working on your cross training you know keeping fit through the winter getting out down the gym or out on the bike we do a lot of sort of climbing and other things in the winter months just to to keep active and keep moving it really does help and it helps you achieve some of these sort of trickier goals that you may have set yourself well that's it for another year thanks very much for joining us it's been absolutely brilliant season uh, doing bits for IMB and a big thanks to the team there we wish them a happy Christmas and New Year and the same goes to yourselves tune in in another couple of months and uh, it won't be long and we'll be out this the other side of winter and heading towards spring back into another summer of riding but join us next time we'll keep progressing our sessions and uh, giving you some more technical challenges to play with out there take care folks